One of the things that has continued to absorb my attention through this whole time I've been part of the fountain pen community is the tools we have swiped, mm, taken over. No, that's not right either. The tools we've borrowed. Yeah, that sounds a bit better. These are some of the tools we've borrowed over time from everywhere, it seems, to use in our fountain pen hobby. Now, in particular today, I'm going to share a few of the swatching tools we use to demonstrate or highlight an ink's color and its property. Hey there, it's Grace. Welcome back. Welcome if you are new. Thank you for clicking on another Grace video. I appreciate you doing so. So, before I get started sharing these tools, a couple of things to note first. In order to show how how these tools best showcase the inks. I decided to use four inks for each tool. One standard ink, the Colorverse Doctor, one of my favorite inks. One dual shader, Sailor Manyo Fuji. One super sheener, my new Lamy Dark Lilac. Oh, and one shimmer ink. And that's because I wanted to pick a heavy loader of a shimmer. And the one in my collection that best fits this criteria is Organic Studios Frog Green Shimmer. So. Now that you know what's coming, let's get to the overhead, shall we? Let's go. All right, first up is something we we, <clears throat> we all use. Um, I know a lot of people use some I've heard do not like it. I love having them. They are the Q-tips. Um, in other places, they're called the cotton swab. I love using these. I absolutely love using them. I love how... Um, I love how simple the swab is when they when we swab with a Q-tip. So, alrighty. And you may notice me bending it in half. That's so I can hold it. I use both ends, and instead of getting my hands dirty, I bend it in half. Um, I've also opened all the four inks that I'm going to leave them open. I actually put the frog green shimmer in the pill case because it it looked a bit precarious. Um, Sarah of Ginger Peachy Pens. I, I feel so much about this um, frog green shimmer, shimmer ink that she gave me a sample of it and I still have it and I thought it'd be perfect to use. Perfect, perfect to use. I'm going to keep that on for right now because I'm sure I'm going to have to shake it. All right. The first one up, as I said, is the Q-tips. Um, let's see. I think it's one of the actual, it's actually one of the easiest swashing, swashing, swatching tools there is. I feel that it gives, it actually gives um, really precise color. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I don't know, I don't think this ink, this, the second ink is Sailor Manio Fuji. Um, it's a dual shader. I don't think it needs shaking up alrighty and the next one is Lamy dark lilac and see how it's just very simple puts on loads of color beautifully puts on loads of color let's put some more there because I know this this is going to it's going to um, where is the cup it's going to sheen quite well. Let's shake this up a bit. Okay, and the last one is, let's see if I can get that shimmer in there. It's not deep enough. Yeah, it's showing up quite nicely. Wow, I just, I re just realized I picked a cool color set with, um, I picked a cool color set in colors. Oh, look at how that's showing up. Oh, okay. Second, um, the second thing that I want to show as a swatching tool, I, about five or six months ago, I... Um, I saw someone talking about a nib. I, I saw someone talking about it. They didn't use it. And I was still, I was intrigued. And so I went looking for it and I found, I found it. And it is, it's basically, it's a folded nib. 
so the ink kind of pools in that fold there. Um, I bought this nib holder at the first Portland PNW Pen Show. <clears throat> so this is its dedicated holder. So it's a folded nib. You dip it in and the ink pools and it comes out like that. Um, it fits. I, I actually enjoy the color that it lays down. Oh, I don't know if it's going to fit in there. Oh, it, yeah, it'll fit enough, I think. Let's see if it gives me some. Not enough. Not enough. We will have to go with the ink miser. I'm going to go off camera and pour some of this in there. Yeah, that's going to dip in there nicely now. usually have no problem swatching. Ooh, I hate that. Alrighty. I'm hoping that I get a better feel for this with the others. Oh, and I need... Oh, man. It puts down the same amount of color, I think, as the Q-tip, but I love the way, I love the scratchy, I don't know, I just love the scratchy. I don't want that there. The only one I'm worried about is, um, I'm going to put this one second. I'm just going to put this back in there because I, I have to wash I'm... this because I'm get, actually going to use this for... The frog green shimmer color instead of that cup. Let's do that instead. I think that'll work better actually for all of it. Alrighty, let's do that dark. The difference in saturation is, is, is a little bit um, interesting. Come in just a touch so we want to see the inks on the sheet rather than the inks in the bottle and let's get to that um, shimmer and this makes it easier to shake too I'm hoping I get some shimmer in there because obviously the shimmer is at the bottom see the color that it lays down um, there's a lot of color um, one of the reasons why people don't like to use the Q-tip is because the Q-tip, it absorbs, it absorbs a lot of, look at, the, look at that, jeez Louise. Um, it absorbs a lot of the ink and a lot of the ink stays on the Q-tip. Whereas this, the ink pools in the nib, the folded part of the nib, and a lot of it comes out in the sheet as you can see. Alrighty. Next up are these three. Now, each of these are used to place a drop of the ink on the spot that you want to make create your swatch. Um, these are the secondary tools. Now, you generally don't swatch with these, although I was watching a video recently, like probably about four days ago, where she put the ink down and then she turned her pipette over and swatched with the pipette to move the ink around with the pipette. That was in interesting. I hadn't seen anybody do that. Um, but all three of these can be used, and I'll, I'll show you um, in the next few. All three of these can be used to just grab a bit of the ink, plop it down, and then swatch, um, swatch your color. This one is the one I will be using to do that. The syringe is one of those that um, I didn't even know. I mean... Who would think that we would use a syringe, but we do. Yeah. Um, this is, the the syringe is one of the things I use to clean my um, my ink, car, ink converter cartridges because it has a small enough um, spout that it can go right inside the, the um, converter cartridge. And I just, Basically, I just squish water in it constantly. 
and that is the way. The other one, um, this one, the eye drop is usually used, I've seen people swatch with it, but it's usually used to fill up, um, I didn't do, let me get it. One of the pens that I use to eyedropper because it does it doesn't have a cartridge converter. Um, it has a space where only ink, larger ink capacity, and you just put the ink in there. There we go. See how large? I mean, that's that's a lot of ink. Anyway, I would use these. There are, there are pens that you eyedropper that you put the ink in, and this is one of mine. This is one of my favorite, absolute favorite pens, I gotta tell you, oh my goodness. Um, I generally don't do swatches with this because it, um, the whole, it just, I don't like, I just don't like using it. it I, I have more control with the pipette um, than with the eyedropper. So I just wanna show those two as part of the swatching tools to um, use before, I mean, before you actually swoosh around. Okay, the next three tools on this list that I have, um, it will it utilizes one of these, and as I said, I'm going to use the pipette. The next one I'm gonna talk about is this one, and this is, the first time I saw this being used was, it's a condiment cup, and the first, one I, first time I saw this being used was by Leanne Likes. Um, I, I love the idea. So I went about getting, I went about getting the, um, the condiment cup and I got one on Amazon and I got this one. I thought, eh, it'll do. I, it just looked tall. But what I didn't realize, and see, I don't know if you can see, it has an indentation. So the ink just kind of pooled in this area and it didn't work. So now I use them to hold water. And then I found this one and I thought, oh, this will work because it has a flat bottom. Make sure to get one with a flat bottom. Um, I did, I, I don't generally use this, but for demonstration purposes, I was able to just buy one of these to use. And let's do some swatching for this with this one. We're gonna put down some ink. Oops, man, almost made a mistake there. The, the cup, where's the cup? There's the cup. All right, let's get, I wanna get this, make sure. All righty. And I'm, it's a big, it's a big area. So, I generally like swatches, I like splotches, rather I should say, than, um, than what, am I, what am I thinking of? Um, large circles. Next one up is Sailor. Alrighty. I don't know if that's gonna be enough, we'll see. Oh yeah, that was enough. That was just enough. Alrighty, next one up is Lamy Dark Lilac. And the reason I wanted to do, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this particular video was to see how, I do these separately when I, when I swatch in my book, but I haven't done them together. Whoa, paper. Oh wow, it's sticking. You wanted to stick to the paper. What are you doing? Let go. Alrighty. Make sure I clean off the old. And then the last one. Last one is this frog green shimmer that I just, I really do need to just, I'm gonna use the pipette just to mix it up. And hopefully I get some, a good, a good bit of shimmer in there. Because it's the whole purpose of using 
four different inks. Wow. Okay. I think I'm gonna put that paper over there. Alrighty. So different. The next tool is, um, the next tool is, I saw these, I saw, um, who did I see? My Dandelion Diaries. Um, Amanda, I think it's Amanda. I think it's Amanda. Or was it Danielle? I forget. I, I'll put her name here. Um, anyway, it's My Dandelion. I saw the, her use one of these in her videos swatching, um, doing her swatches. These are acrylic rounds. I'm gonna do it this way. So basically, the scrapbookers use this, they have round stamps, and they put this on it to make a, make a um, stamp with the, make a stamp with the stamp. Yeah, those are the words I'm gonna use right now. Okay then. Anyway, I searched all over the internet and I couldn't find it, and then, I wasn't using the right wording. And then I saw a used, I went to a scrapbooking store basically, and I looked for these and it was out of stock. And I found the word, it's, they're called acrylic round blocks. Um, scrapbooking blocks, and I have a couple of them, they usually come um, in square or rectangular shapes so you can put your, your cling stamps on them. These are made for round stamps, as I said. I tend to use this size, so it's this smaller size. I have used this larger size. Um, I, I, I prefer the smaller size. For this particular um, video, I'm going to use the larger size. Um, I like the this rather than the condiment cup, as you can see. Oh, we're a bit wet, we don't. The condiment cup is so much, whoa, I'm trying to get underneath there. The condiment cup is so much larger. I like the condiment cup. I don't necessarily want all those big old circles. I do like a big splotch, but not a big circle. Yeah, I'm being really particular. Okay, um, let's swatch this one. Let's do this. First one up is Doctor. And I wanted to do particularly some really different um, different tools. I think I need a tiny bit more. And probably not that much. That's okay. That's okay. We're doing, we're good, we're good. And one of the reasons I like this is because also you can see through to see where where you're creating that circle. So yeah, I like that a little bit better than I like the metal cup, but to each his own, right? Okay, Salamanio. Let's do that one. I'm gonna put these over here. And do swatchy, swatchy. Alrighty, then Lamy. Wow. Oh, Lamy, you wanted to come out, didn't you? And I find that I have more control with the circle, with the wrap, the block, rather than um, rather than the the metal cup as well. All right, one more to do, and that's this one. Oh, and I need to shake this darn thing up again. I'll just stir it, as you can see, with the pipette. All righty, and one more. Sweet. Okay. Um, 
there is um, one other tool that I want to show you that I'm, I'm not going to use. Corinna, Corinna Loves to Plan uses an empty vial, so she will put her, her dro eyedropper down and use the vial to make a circle. I found these round, so that's, that's how I started to use it. But anyway, that is one of the ones you can use. Okay. The, the next couple of, um, the next few ones are plastic sheets. Now there are two kinds of plastic sheets that I've seen people use. And one of them is bubble wrap and one of them is a baggie. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do the bubble wrap. Um, let me see, I'm just gonna try to do it. All right, the first one up is the dock door. And I have not, I must say, I have not practiced this at all. So I don't know how this will work, but I have looked enough at the people who use the baggie. One of them is Karina Lost the Plan and to see how they do it. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe that off. Oh, you can see my nails. I don't know if you can see, I can see it. My nails have um, scraped through and that's the paper. Oh, the paper, I forgot to tell you. The paper is actually um, A4 size Tomoe River paper. I found it in a Japanese store here in Portland. Alrighty, next one. I think I'm, oh, maybe, I thought maybe I was putting too much, um, too much ink down. I don't think so. I only have one baggie, so I have to wipe each one in between. Next one up is Dark Lilac. Okay, I'm liking this baggy thing. This one's not moving as much as I'd like it to. Um, dark Lilac is coming off as a very dry ink. I actually need to use some water for this one. Don't want this mixed up with frog green shimmer. All right, last one is, as I said, frog green shimmer. I feel like I'm mixing a drink or something. Ooh, might have been a bit too much, but we'll see. And what she does is she just moves the ink with her finger. And then whatever ink comes up, she kind of plats, push it, pushes it, pushes it down again. Okay, now I'm going to try the first bubble wrap, but if it's not working, I'm not gonna try the others. I'm just, let me just do that. I love, that, that's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I might have to, Karina, this is nice. This is, a, I like that. I used to do, the reason I, I say I like that is because I used to do, um, in the years that led from quilting to art quilts, I used to, my, my make, favorite type of quilt to make, art quilt to make, was the abstract art quilt. So it's not a shape, not a, not a, any, nothing, but, putting fabrics together and creating something out of it. And that, all that reminds me of it. Yeah, oh, sweet. All right, let's do this bubble wrap. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. 
I've, I purposely chose not to do any testing beforehand because I really wanted to see. So I wanted it to pop the bubbles too. I'm not sure that that's gonna make a difference. All right, it doesn't, um, I'm not sure. Oh, don't pop because then the popping takes on the color. Anyway, that's okay. That's okay. I'm still preferring the plastic wrap. And I'm not sure the plastic wrap is flat. And I'm not sure because it's bubble wrap. I'm not sure how to to how much ink to put down. One of the things that um see there's one of the things that I know for sure bubble wrap well not know for sure. This is what I've been this is what I've been told that shimmer and sheen show up well with bubble wrap. Oh, we got a lot there. Okay, let's see if the sheen shows up. Because of the separation of the bubbles in the wrap, it should show. See, I'm not seeing. Oh, wow. That's turned very pink. Or purple as it may and the last one is I really want to mix this up because I'm seeing sheen on that baggie but I'm not seeing much of it and I'm hoping to get a little bit more sheen almost let's, let's try not to get that color in there we'll leave that at, at yeah we'll leave that like it is I love that it's pooling in the colors it, it pooled in the colors here in the bubble bits here but not necessarily any of these alrighty the other the next tool I'm gonna show you is one that a lot of people I've seen a lot of people get and I love absolutely love this this is the kakimori nib now I got the kakimori nib in the stainless steel, it comes in two finishes. It comes in brass and um, stainless steel. I got the stainless steel, I was reading about it and I thought I wanted more, um, this one more. The brass, according to what I've read, is the brass is the smoother writer um, and it creates a broader strokes, um, which is good for artist sketching. So that's why the brass, although I must say, um, most people, most ink enthusiasts get the, what's that? Most people get the, the um, brass. My goodness, that word would not come to me. Um, stainless steel nib is used for finer writing. It gives more feedback and great for everyday writing. And it's for that last bit that I chose to get the stainless steel nib because it says it's good for everyday writing. Not that I wear white with my, my Kakamori nib um, every day, but as it's a swatch thing, I just thought stainless steel would be good for me. Um, I think it, it has these grooves in it. It has the channels in it that holds lots and lots and lots of ink, which is really cool. I have it in my Tachikawa um, nib. One of the things I put it in when I originally got, so. Let's just, can I take it out? Yes, I can take it out. So this is the nib itself. Boy, my hands are freaking messed up. This is the nib. And I put it in a wooden nib that I had. I didn't get the Kakimori nib. And I was worried about the, the, the wood nib, so I got the um, plastic one that has a grip. I actually like this one, Tachikawa. I'll link this in the description if there's something you're interested in. Okay, um, let's do Kakimori nib. I'm gonna do something different with the Kakimori nib for the swatches. I'm going to 
The Kakaroi nib is really good for laying down different line widths. And I'm going to try to do different line widths with the Kakaroi nib. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, we'll we'll see. We're just we're just going to test it. Okay? Already. So the lower the angle, the thicker the Did I get any? And as you raise the angle up, I'm not getting, it's, I think it's because the, the nib is not, the, the actual hole to the ink is not as, and see, the more you raise the angle up, the thinner line you're going to get until. So there is the Kakamori, there's the demonstration of the Kakamori nib. Let's do the other inks. This is the Sailor Manio. And I'm filling up that channel there. Come on. You're not giving me a... Wow, you're not, what are you, why are you, okay. Let's just go this again. Okay, there we go. Almost wants to, wow, okay. A little bit difficult, are you? But that's the beauty of the Kakamori nib. It's a great writer as well because you can you can see the different line widths you can get all right let's see if i can i've never had an issue getting the thicker line width there we go and then the last one okay where I'm lo I just love swatches. I love swatches! Oh my gosh, can I just say that enough? I just love seeing the um, don't spill on my paper. I just need you to mix. Let's mix you with the eyedropper too. Get those particles into the solution. Thank you very much. And then we got a nice deep dip. Let's see what you do. This one is, I'm like almost flat on that. And then straight up. Straight up is, is the thinnest line that you can get. Okay, I love the Kakamori nib. I apps, I'm a Adoring. Um, one of the things that I like about this particular um, holder is the holder came with a cover for the nib. So that's how I store it. There you go. Um, the other way I saw this was I was doing some research for the, um, the way we swatch, the tools we use to swatch. One of the things I saw was obviously there's, you can swatch with the pointed end here and do, you know, a square of it. I actually saw someone use the back end. So I'm going to try the back end for the glass dip pen for that particular. Let's see how you do. I'm liking that. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Let's do the next one. Oh my gosh, I'm done. I'm, some of these, like I don't use the back end of a glass dip, glass dip pen, um, but I might now. Look, look at how cool that is. That is awesome. Um, it's interesting that this dark lilac, when I swatched it with the plastic baggie, 
and was, was there anything else? Just the plastic baggie. It was so, it was not wet. Everything else, including, see these are the other two. Everything else was really wet. I'll show you most of this in, in a minute, um, except that one. This was gigantically wet. That was just like lots. And let me put that, the glimmer in solution. Alrighty. Oh my goodness, I love that. As I said, I didn't try these out before, these new ones, because I use, I use Kakamori nib, glass of pen, this side, and then my acrylic rounds and folded nibs. Those are the four that I generally use. That is cool. I absolutely love what it puts down. Okay, um, this next one is just absolutely new to me. And I saw, what is her name, Julia Royal. She said she had, she just got married and she had um, these plastic spoons, these clear plastic spoons. And she tried to swatch, just, you know, put a, put a bit down and swatch with the plastic spoon. And I thought, that's really good. I didn't want to buy a whole box of plastic spoons. So I just bought a metal spoon, regular metal spoon. Um, this was like, what, a dollar? And... I know, one of the one of the things that I like, let me go, go here. One of the things I like about the round is that you can see through it to see where your color is going. That's what I like about the plastic spoon that she was using, that you can see that it's a clear plastic spoon so you could see the color. I won't be able to see the color, but I really wanted to try swatching with the back end of the spoon. So, um, Let's do that. We will use, we gotta bring some color in with the pipette again. And now this is another thing, I have no clue. We'll see how each, we'll see how much the spoon does and do I need to add more or less depending upon, let's see. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, oh, that was really cool. Oh my gosh. Um, one of the things that you need to know about me, I love a circle. Circle is my symbol that I did with quilting. And I, I love the circle as a symbol, the continuity, it never ends. Anyway, there, that, being able to do that circle. Oh man, that's nice. Okay, Salem Anya, let's do a little bit of you. So it's, it's, I think that's a good bit to put in there. I've got splotches of ink, or I know you guys can't see it. Splotches of ink all over this table when I do the eyedropper. Anyway, back to business. That swatches so beautifully, <gasps> even though I can't even see it. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, thank you, Julia. That was kind of cool. That was like, that was like a little gift. That's a bit much. That's a bit much. We will see if that's too much for the spoon. Yeah, that was a bit much, but that's okay. That's okay. Wow, last one. We'll do a, a mixy. I must say, I am looking at that bubble wrap. The The reason I wanted to showcase the bubble wrap is the reason why, how it dried. I'm gonna show you in a minute. I'm gonna show you in a minute all of them. I'm gonna show you in a minute. Let's move over here. There was a little bit of control because once you put the spoon down and you're spreading out the, um, the ink, you can see underneath because it's a it's a um, concave. Is that concave? It goes underneath. I think that's whatever way it is. I never got could get that right. You can see as you're swirling it that the edges are. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, one of the things that I did not include here, by the way, um, before I go on, I purposely chose not to include a paintbrush. Um, no particular reason. I just, I, 
I know people sometimes swatch with paintbrushes. It's one of those that I thought about it after I'd chosen all the tools and I'm like, I don't need to do that. It's, it's a different thing. Um, so let's look at these samples. Um, the first one, the, actually, let me, the thing I want to show you is this one here. Um, this is the bubble wrap. And the reason why I wanted to use the bubble wrap is because I heard exactly what this is doing. It didn't do it much here. And that's probably, okay. It didn't do it much. But as you can see, the bubble wrap, the sheening, the shimmer rather, went into the pools that the bubbles created. And so you have this, this, this thing going on, which is really cool. I didn't get it much in these. Bubble wrap is a difficult thing. I find it difficult to use. But if there's something that I want to show a shimmer, um, this, I could use that. I could use that. Oh my goodness. I love this. Alrighty. So this is the first. This is the first. I prefer, as I said, using the cotton swabs. I love the color laid down by the cotton swab, mainly because of with the Sailor Manyo Fuji, you can see the, the gradation of color. So by the time you get to the end, you have used up usable ink in the swab. Whatever is going to stay in the swab is, or is going to stay. And you get this beautiful kind of like, um, what is the word? Going from light to dark, whatever that is, whatever that word is. Um, you can see it showing up in the shimmer, lots of shimmer on that cotton swab in the beginning, and most of it came off here, and then you don't have any here. And I like that for a sheening shimmer, sorry, a sheening ink, because of that same reason. You get the undertone, the underbelly color, but you also get to see the sheen. That's one of the reasons why I prefer using the, um, I'll put this down there, because some of these colors are still wet. Um, the folded nib, um, I, pref I like the folded nib because of this action going on here. It is not a circle, it's just a random bit of color, but you get to see all of the, all of the color and you get to see if there's a shimmer. Um, this one here is gorgeous with all that shading. Oh my gosh, that's color versus doctor. Oh, jeez Louise, so, so good. Um, the metal cup, I am not a fan, what is that? I don't know what that is. That needs to get off the paper. I'm not a fan of the metal cup. I'm more a fan of the, sm the spoon. I would use the spoon rather than the cup. I don't have much control. And it's not that I need control, but I like how my um, acrylic rounds did here. Isn't that interesting? Because this, the swatching of the acrylic round it moves the color in certain in a certain way that you get all of this pooling of color and shading all over. Look at each one of these. That's one of the reasons why I love to use the acrylic round. As I said, um, mentioned before with the others, I'm gonna put the link to where I got these things, um, the specific ones, the tools that I used here. And then, oh my gosh, look at this page. This is gorgeousness, absolutely gorgeous. I will find a way to use baggy. I love how the ink shows up there. I'm not a fan of the bubble wrap with the standard and the um, dual shading inks. I'm not even a fan with the sheening. I think it's best used the bubble wrap with the shimmer because then the shimmer kind of like pools the shimmer kind of pools in the pockets, like I showed you before. It pools in the pockets left with the bubble wrap. Um, one of the things that I did do with the bubble wrap that I didn't, I did it here, but I didn't do it necessarily with the Docto, is I moved the bubble wrap all around for the frog green shimmer, the Organic Studios frog, Organic Studios, yes. I didn't move the bubble wrap. I kind of pressed on the bubbles kind of press them in. That could be the difference between these two in particular, or all of them, and this one. And of course, the khaki mori nib. I specifically wanted to bring in the khaki mori nib, not as a, um, not as I did with the folded nib, you know, the scratchy up and down. I really just wanted to see, <clears throat> see how it does with laying down line widths. Um, the wetter the ink, the better it does. This is a wet ink. 
the this this is not a, a wetting this is not a wetting ink at all this is a dry ink and it 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 struggled it really struggled to give me line width this is beautiful that is absolutely beautiful and then the two things that i didn't know i just happened to include afterwards because i was preparing for this video and the glass dip pen the the opposite end this end of the glass dip pen this end here i will have to use that because i love i love just oh, i love the randomness of it i absolutely love the randomness and the spoon who knew that the spoon would do such beautiful circles Oh, this looks oh my goodness this looks like a, the moon a, a mono a mono mono color moon oh anyway digress um, this one's still obviously still drying but I love how the sheen let's see if you can get that sheen you can you get can you get can you do can you get what I wanted to get I can't okay there we go stay you see how the spoon lays in color here and then up here um, it's oh it's fascinating how they all have this jut in color they all have this jut in color okay it's interesting how the difference between the metal the metal cup with the the, the color pooled in the center and you get lighter color at the edges but with the spoon the spoon took the it's like the initial one, the initial drag of the spoon shifted the color and you can see that shift in each one of these. Oh my goodness. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about that has to do with swatching, but it's not about the inks per se, particularly. Um, two things, swatch cards. Now I started using swatch cards um, fairly early on and this was my first set I got the um, Colorverse color space so this is the Hubble color space and I this is the first when I first started making swatches this was the first so this is the Hubble it's an image so basically let's start over. These cards come in three um, sizes. You get how much? 15, 15 sheets of three different um, backgrounds. They're three spaced theme designs and so you get 45 sheets of three each of the different designs. And this is printed with water resistant image. So as you swatch the image, let's just do this. So as you swatch the image, the ink on the card, wherever the image is, you don't, obviously there's no, no ink gonna be there. So this is a really pretty way. This is one of, this is what I, this one has three, I think. Here's the, the other one. The other one is this one. So these are the three that I got, the stars, and then the space, man there's a spaceman in there and then the globe and it has actually words written on it jupiter it's supposed to represent jupiter so these three water resistant image printed on the cards that's the first one the second one is the second one I, i'm only going to tell you about three there's, there's quite a few out there um the second one is um color ring cards these are the my go-to i swatch every ink that comes in gets a, a coloring card and i've decided to swatch i just because i love doing that i love having that color there um i decided to have a swatch on the front the name at the top a swatch on the front and then because i didn't want to have to lift up each card I swatch the bottom of each card so I can go at a glance and just go oh there's there's the super show teal 
because I can see the colors there. So that's how I use the coloring. These are my go-to. Um, coloring cards are 100, I think they're, they're equivalent to, if they're not exactly, um, mixed media paper or uh, 100, 100 GSM paper. So this is not the paper that we would generally use for, for um, writing with our journals or however we use inks. It's not the paper generally, um, but I prefer that. I also, um, I also, because I wanted, because I know that this wasn't the paper that we would use, I also, where's the thing that, the thing that I used? Oh, they're hidden. They're hidden by Spidey. Spidey's in the corner there. Spidey needs to come in and say hello. Say hello to the people, Spidey. Anyway. Um, I actually took the time, I took the time to cut up rhodia paper and rounded the edges because when I'm swatching, rhodia paper is more like the paper that I would write with ink. And so when I'm swatching, I will swatch up one of these and I'll swatch up one of these so I can see the difference between. I also got some um, um, Nemozine paper. I don't use this a whole lot. Um, mainly because I'm, I don't use nemozine paper. I don't use it, so I thought, I, why not, why do it? But I do use the Rhodia paper just to give a feel for what the ink would be like on one of the regular pieces of paper and not necessarily um, the coloring, the heavier cardstock paper. The other, the other one that I did not get a chance to get in before I did this video was... Um, it's called Wearing Ghoul Ink Drop Color Swatches. And I'm gonna insert some, some um, samples here. They come in sets of 50 and it has a special coating. So the ink stays, other th unlike this one, where the ink pools around that printed image, it has a printed image on the front that the ink stays in that image, with, stays within the shape. Um, it comes in a variety of shapes. My favorite is the ink droplet or teardrop that I like to say. Um, of course, the other thing that we have for swatches are paper and notebooks. I, I've used Cosmo Airlight the first time. Um, I've heard issues with Cosmo Airlight and they're not being made anymore, so I can't get it. But that was the swatch, the book that I got for swatching. And this year I decided to go smaller with my swatch books. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the papers because there's so many papers out there that um, are good for fountain pens, for fountain pen ink, I should say, that they are fountain pen friendly, let's say. And they prevent the feathering, they prevent the bleed through um, and minimal ghosting. That's what you want, definitely. Um, there are certain papers that are good for showcasing um, certain ink properties. Like this is the this is my this is my series notebook. This is what I did ink vent in. This is what I will do thirty inks thirty days in. I had planned to do April, but my move kind of took over, so I didn't do April. Um, you all there's also when you're talking about papers, there's also um, taking into consideration absorbency and drying time, depending upon what it is you want to do with the ink. Um, brands of paper include, but are not limited to, Midori. These are my, my two Midori, the um, Tomorrow River paper, which I did the swatching on today. Rhodia, Leuchterm, Clairefontaine, so many more. So, so, so many more. I tried a few, some I like, some I don't like. Clairefontaine is not one of the, the papers that I like, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, one of the other ones, just didn't have it. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, this one. This is this is not. Um, this is Oasis. This book is is Oasis notebook, no paper, and this one is the Midori B6 Slim. That's what that is. There you go. Um, the the paper. One of the papers that I decided to use was my for my pip sheets these are my pip sheets these are the log sheets for pen and ink pairings per month and i designed them and created them they're available for purchase um, in sets of 10. this paper is aeroful paper i love this paper for this work i just love this i love being able to compare like 
the pip sheets are all about one, the page is for one pen, and then all the inks I put in it, and I can, anyway, that's the pip sheets. I will link a video so that you can learn about the, the pip sheets, but um, I tested a few papers, and I prefer the Irifil paper for the pip sheets, so yeah. So I'm using Irifil this year, and I'm using MD, and I'm using Oasis to do all of my swatching. All of it, all of my swatching. Um, okay, that's it. That's a whole bunch of tools, y'all. That's a whole bunch of tools for inking swatches. Um, let me know in the comments, what is your favorite way to swatch your inks? What is your favorite way? Plus, if you saw um, a way to swatch that you didn't know about, but that intrigues intrigues you, go ahead and give it a try. I mean, there's nothing to say you have to continue using and you might find you really like it. And as I said, check out the links in the description box um, that I've left for any of the things that I've shared here. I kind of thoroughly had fun doing this. Also, also, one of the links I will share with you is Atlas. You Using the code um, GRACE, G-R-A-C-E, you get 10% off your order all the time. It's just not a one, not off your first order. It's kind of like all the time. Um, the link is in the description box as well. I absolutely had fun just gathering all the tools and swatching with them. Um, I love finding out how other people swatched. I watched a lot of videos. I watched a lot of videos and to bring in stuff that other people would use. Now, I know that you know that I know that this is by no means an exhaustive list of tools for swatching. If there is one you particularly enjoy that I haven't covered here, <clears throat> that you use and you choose to use, if I get more, five or more different ones from what I've shared here, I will create another video on it. Also, if you enjoyed this video, really enjoyed seeing all these swatching tools, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. It helps YouTube algorithm know to show these videos to more people like you. Yes. Alrighty, that's it. That's it. I had so much fun. This was this was a lot of fun. Um, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Ooh.